Hi there. In a previous Haskell video, Exploring Binary Trees Part 2, we implemented three useful functions for extracting values from a binary tree into a list. We implemented these functions using the pre-order, in-order, and post-order traversal strategies. If you are not familiar with these strategies for traversing binary trees, I highly encourage you to watch the Exploring Binary Trees Part 2 video before continuing with this one. This is a Brata video, and if you don't know what that means, it just means it's a little something something extra. In the comments section for the Exploring Binary Trees Part 2 video, Viewers Oasis posed a related problem. This video presents a solution to that problem. I tried reaching out to Zoasis to confirm my assumptions about the problem, but I did not get a response. Regardless, the assumptions I make are reasonable and the solution that results is interesting enough to discuss. So let's get into it. So here we are, and we're doing a few things up top. We're importing some functions and a data type and its data constructors that are going to be useful for us. So on this first import line, uh, we are importing the binary tree data type and we're pulling out its data constructors as well. We're also importing the values pre-order function that we built in our Exploring Binary Trees Part 2 video. And we're going to use this to test the solution that we come up with in this video. I'm importing uh, guard from the control.monad uh, library and I'm pulling in from just and is just from data.maybe because we're going to make use of that a little bit later. So just a reminder, this is how we constructed our, this is how we defined our binary tree. So what's our problem, right? So essentially the problem boils down to us writing a function that deserializes a pre-order string encoded binary tree. Hold up, what do I mean by that? So in our, in the previous video, we built this values pre-order function that takes a binary tree of some data type. It could be uh, cars, chars, it could be ints, whatever. It takes a binary tree and it outputs a list of the elements in that binary tree, but it does so in a pre-order fashion. So we could essentially uh, encode a binary tree of characters as a string using values pre-order. So we input the binary tree of car and we get back a list of characters, which is a string. So let's say we did that and we encoded our binary tree. If we took that string representation that we got from values pre-order and we passed it to some function that has not yet been defined that takes a string and gives us back the original binary tree of characters as you can see the resultant type uh, from the composition of these two functions is is this over here so it's 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 an identity right we gave it a tree, we got a string, we put the string into another function, uh, we get back the original tree. And so that's that's what we're going to be working on. We're going to figure we're gonna build the function that does this part of the computation. How do we go from the pre-order string encoded binary tree into the binary tree of the characters? All right, let's move on. So these are, these are the constraints on our problem. We have in, in, in the tree that Zoasis gave us an example of, we have P nodes, these are parent nodes, and these act as internal nodes, right? And so you're gonna find these on the inside of the tree. A P node can be a root node if it has one at least one child node. We can also have W nodes, which are gonna be leaf nodes, and 
we'll find these W nodes to the left of a P node. We'll also have B nodes. These are also leaf nodes and we'll find these to the right of a P node. If we get an empty string, we're not really, we're not gonna output anything useful. We have this empty tree that we can give us output. So let's say that's, that's our answer for that. What if we have a W? Well, we can output a leaf node that has the W character. And this is what that tree would look like. It would just be a root node and, and that's it. What is this, a stub? And the same thing happens with B, right? We just have that. What if we have a P and that's the only thing we get? Well, that's invalid input, right? Because a root node without any children cannot be a P node. What if we get PW? So now we have a situation where the root node is the P node and we have a W leaf node that will fall to the left of that P node. And so this is what that, that tree would look like. Another example, P and B, uh, similar to what we have above, except B falls to the, to the right. And what if we have PP, right? Invalid input, because again, a P cannot be uh, a leaf node, right? So now we're getting into some more valid inputs here. PW, PWB, right? I've written out what that would look like using the data constructors for more binary tree. And this is what that representation would look like. And this is the example that Zoasis gave us. Let's go a little bit further and say, what if we have a P followed by a P? Then this is what that tree would look like, following all the same rules that we, that, that we talked about so far. And here is another example of a tree. And that's that, just let, let that sink in for a second. Okay, so I, I just put this here again as a reminder of the data constructors that we, that we have available to us. I wrote out a driver for, for this module, right? Uh, that's going to read the string from standard input. We're going to decode it, try to construct this tree. And if it's a valid tree, then we're going to do the reverse operation, which is to re-encode it. And so we're gonna get, but we should get back the original string. And I will, I will uncomment this as we work through this solution. So first let's give our, our function a name. I'm gonna call this pre-order uh, to tree. And it should take a string and so, Simply, we can say, you know, this, this is a binary tree of char, but let's, let's, let's build it like this for a while. And then I'll show you why I, I, I decided to put maybe in here as well. So this, this is, this is, this is what we're building. So we have a pre-order to tree. What happens? when we have an empty string. Just like our example, we get an empty, fine. What happens when we have a W? Well, this is just leaf of W. And note here, 
that a string is a type synonym for a list of characters. And so the input for the function is string. This is equivalent to this. Right? But our input for our binary tree data constructors is a character, right? Just a character by itself. So let's use this more uh, convenient notation. And what happens when we have a B? Well, this is just going to be leaf B. Fine. Let's uh let's pattern match some more. So let's pre-order to tree, and if we have a P, and we have a W, followed by whatever else we have, then we are going to want to first we're we're gonna want we're going to want to create a root node that has this p right so we're gonna create a p node and then we're going to take the w and put that w as the left child to that p node and then we're going to call pre order tree on the remaining uh on on the remaining list of characters on the remaining string now this gets to where we where 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 it's a good idea to use the the maybe monad because we could have because of haskell's lazy evaluation we could have a case where we have a valid write let's say we have a valid write subtree and an invalid left subtree. And we wouldn't find this out until runtime. And we'd get, in, in when we're testing, we'd get some gibberish about, oh, here's a part of your tree and the rest of it is an error, <laughs> right? So we can take advantage of the do notation and the maybe monad to say, hey, we have to make sure that both subtrees are going to be valid for us to construct a tree. And so that's why I brought in maybe uh, up top. So let's do this. So we have a maybe there. Uh, we're going to need to do that. So when we when we have a value coming back, we 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 use the just data constructor from maybe. Fine. And let's get in our do notation. So this is our left subtree, and let's get the pre order of W. Right. We know how we that's 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 pretty easy. We know how that's going to turn out. And if we have our right subtree then once we have those, we can now put the whole thing together. So there we go. This is how we would construct it for this PW uh, pattern. Let's do this for the PB pattern. And we're gonna 
do a bit of copy and paste here. And if we if we get the B, then we know we we know a thing or two here, right? So first of all, the B is a leaf node to the right. So we're not going to this means that we're we, we there there is no um there's not much. There's nothing that, that, that should come after this right no, nothing else nothing else matters um and so we can say let's have the right subtree of grid b and our left subtree is like this now i'm thinking that there is a problem here where there is a chance that the there is a chance that we may get some let's say someone inputs p b something else right then that encoding isn't it, it, it's not right right so we should throw some type of of error or or something if we if we get that. So let's see. If we get PB excess, then we can say let's guard that so what i want to do here is check that the length of excess is equal to zero all right that's what i want to do so guard it takes a function so equal zero and we pass length of excess equal wait was i just missing that is that the issue Ooh. Great. So I'm guarding to check if length of excess is equal to zero. So if length of excess is equal to zero, then we proceed. And cool. Now let's move on to the other. So we did our right subtree with B. Cool. Uh, let's get this and our other useful pattern is p and with this one we can have our left subtree get our pre-order tree and we can put our essentially the rest of our list in this we don't have a right subtree but we will have our left subtree oh fail there we go and this this is kind of our last this is our this is our last useful pattern this pattern could have been just the p and the remaining uh excess with the knowledge that you know we already exhausted the w and the b here but i think this this is this is clearer 
So I choose to use this pattern, uh, to be explicit about this pattern. So we can also do this. Uh, nothing, right? So we're taking in strings. That means that we could get anything here. And so if we get something that falls outside the pattern of string of characters that we hope to get that represent a pre-order string encoded binary tree, then if it's outside of that, then that's not a valid binary tree. And so we should get nothing. Let's uncomment this. I don't like that I'm calling guard there because that guard would that would just throw an error right but what i want is for us to get a nothing Right. There we go. And we don't need this. So we don't want to throw an error in the middle of our function. What are you telling me to do? There we go. Wonderful. This isn't true. I have this all wrong. If not, Excess, then do nothing like this. Let's do this. So, if null excess, then then we do this. Else, nothing. So what's an example that we wanted to do? Let's do P W P P W B. We did that. We got back our input. So we know that that worked out. Let's do P P W B. We got back our input. We know that that worked out. Let's do PWPWB. We got back our input. That worked out. And let's do PP. There we go. There's our nothing. Let's do P, B, this something. Put a valid subtree under that B 
Let's see if we get back anything. No. We get back nothing. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or learned a thing or two. If the written word is more your style, check me out on medium.com or on Twitter, both at O'Neill Harrison. Until next time, peace.